make no mistake, come January in this committee, the days of this committee, weakening regulations and putting our economy once again at risk of another financial crisis will come to an end. All right, so all these easing of regulations, uh, the new sheriff in town for the House Financial Services Committee says that's going to stop. Uh, we're going to make sure they're buttoned up tight and we don't ease up on that sort of thing. Uh, stocks were dropping on that, particularly financials, when they first got wind of it. Charlie Gasparino on the impact of all of that. Look, I guess not a shocker. No, I, and I think it's an overreaction. Put it in context, the Democrats control the House, not the Senate. They have, uh, controlling the House, they have almost no oversight ability is to tell the Fed. They have oversight. They have almost right. no ability to tell the Fed, <clears throat> the Treasury Department, the Securities and Exchange Commission, even the U.S. Attorney's uh, Office to do anything, to, you know, s turn the screws on the banking industry. Um, so she really can't do anything. Now, she could hold... She can make their life hell, though. She can do investigations and, you know, pick, pick out the ones that she doesn't like. But from what I'm... All the information I'm getting from people close to her is that there are two banks in her crosshairs. Number one, Wells Fargo. It's a California bank. Uh, she thinks it is not done well by the minority community uh, in, in California, in particular where they're, where they're located. Right. And um, they have a lot of consumer-related scandal stuff still going on. Remember the creation of the phony accounts? But there's been more stuff. So I think they're somewhat in the crosshairs, and they know it. Uh, the other one is Deutsche Bank, for the simple reason that was Donald Trump's bank. And she's made it clear that she's going to go after, if, of all the banks, those are the banks she's going to focus on. And it will be Wells Fargo on, you know, what they've done in, the, in black communities, minority communities in California in particular, because that's, that's her constituency. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But Deutsche Bank, <clears throat> all the deals they did with Trump. And so they are, she's going to, I hear that, those are the two banks. I don't think she's going to spend a lot of time grilling Jamie Dimon over whatever. I mean, I think those are the banks that she's going to go after. And it's just practical. She doesn't... But isn't the Federal Reserve... The, the entity that's that's handling a lot of this, right? Fed, Fed so. provides the front line um, regulation of the of the big banks. Uh, there is some listen. There is some. So they do the stress test and all this other stuff that they <laughs> wanted to. Not only that, they it regulate. Up on, right, they it regulate up on some of the community banks with the latest yeah. push. I can't imagine her opposing, you know, helping community banks. No, no, that's not it. I mean, right. I, I think what she. She's what if what she basically said was that she's going to try to make Dodd Frank the the main banking law in the Obama administration stronger, right. but she has almost no power to do that. You know, she can she has oversight and she has investigative powers, but she has no power to do it. Got it. What she can do is screw with Deutsche Bank, which she will because of Trump and Wells. Um, GE. I saw uh, I saw a great guy in the in the green room just now. I hear you have a good interview Bob coming Wright, up, yeah. Bob Wright. Um, Very different from the days he was there. Right. Um, listen, here's one thing we could say about GE. It's in everybody, all these portfolios. It was once a massive company. Right. It has 115 billion in long-term debt. It has 30 billion in pension debt, uh, pension unfunded pension liabilities. Um, I don't want to put too much emphasis. I'm, I'm going to mention Lehman Brothers, but it's not quite there. This is a problem for the markets if this company does not, if this new CEO, Larry Culp, doesn't figure it out. It is t in too many portfolios for, for it to go to zero, for it not to have major impact on the market. It's got but too hasn't much it been drastically reduced in a lot of portfolios? I know the dividend used to be the big lure. It's still out there. It's yeah. still out there. It's hard to, people keep, what happens is when it was 17, people are like, I don't want to sell at 17, right, I want to right. 30. Then it's all 10. I don't want to sell it, at, at, sell it at 10. Then it's now it's 8, and it's actually down again today. It was up a little yesterday. But as, you think of the days of a Jack Welch or Bob Wright handling things. Listen, I mean, some of the best executives of our era. Jack and, and Welch. What happened? Jack Welch is, is my, my guess is, and you can ask Bob about this, Jack Welch is not a happy camper right now. Um, I think a couple things happened. I think Jack built a big company. It was a huge conglomerate. The market started saying conglomerates aren't good anymore, right, and it right. didn't make its numbers. And Jeff Immelt was too wedded to that. Remember, he was a GE insider, not to drastically transform the company. He got sidetracked in environmental stuff and windmills and quote unquote tech instead of worrying about the core businesses. I think Jack would have done better off bringing in Nardelli 
Bob Nardelli was another uh, another uh, um, uh, candidate for that job, longtime GE, and he's a GE guy, but he, and he was an operations guy because he knows the operations, or Jay McInerney, uh, who then went to Woulda, three shoulda, hours. coulda at this point, though. But, you know, yeah. Jeff, listen, I don't think Jeff Immel is a, is a crook or anything, but I, here's the one thing I'm going to tell you. There's a DOJ investigation about all the accounting stuff. All these accounting charges keep coming up. If they find out that, you know, management should have known or if they hold management accountable, someone's got to ask him, where were you? And do what they happen? And do yeah. they and do they claw back his salary? I don't know. We shall see. All right. Thank you very much, buddy. Um, by the way, the aforementioned Bob Wright, uh, <laughs> the former general electric vice chairman, NBC Universal chairman. Uh, and CEO and responsible for me getting my job, by the way, uh, CNBC, many, many years He's ago. He's the guy. Well, one of them. I mean, uh, he could have said no, and I'm he didn't. I'm going to scream at him out there. Yeah, that, that's the only <laughs> flaw in his otherwise illustrious career.